are the qualities that some drivers have that others don't? What is it that makes a race winner or a series champion? We're here at Snefton to find out exactly that by spending a day in the life of three times Clio Cup champion Paul Rivett and the current title holder to find out what he's got that others haven't. No, I can't wait to get back out there to be honest, it's been over two months since I was last in the, in the Clio so uh, it's going to be absolutely great to be back out there, brilliant circuit here as well so uh, it's really hot out there today so uh, we're going to be doing a bit of work with the tyres making sure we, uh, we get everything right ready for the weekend and uh, it's probably the main thing we're going to be testing today is just making sure we get, get our tyres right and ready for, for this weekend. Uh, Done a few little preparations, as in just going through the tyres with uh, with with Colin, the uh, the team boss here, just so we've picked we've put our, our four old tyres aside, ready for for the racing this weekend, and um, that will go with our four new yeah, tyres. We've been right. through been through the other tyres, worked out what we're going to use in testing, uh, which order we're going to use them in, and uh, talk talked a little bit about our, our testing today and what we're going to do out there. Um, I always make sure I eat very healthily, uh, especially coming up to a, a race weekend. Uh, no alcohol for at least three days before I get in the race car because um, I always think that's just a bonus to have a completely clear head uh, and try not to have any heavy nights the weekend before. Thank you Maggie. Four minutes left in their session. Um, four minutes left in session. Well I've driven the car now Fitz, you know, I've done a, completed a, a fair few championships now. I think this is my seventh full, full championship in the Clio so I know the car very well, I know the tyres very well, I know what extra we're going to get out of a new tyre when we bump that on and it does make quite a difference out there. Uh, tell us if they're holding Clio's in the pit lane, we're going to stay in the corner. Right? The tyre management this year, because they've reduced the allocation, is far more important than it's ever been before. For the slick allocation, um, they've got to protect and run all the tyres right to the last minute because obviously they're going to run out through the season should they use too many tyres in testing. The guys who've done the, who've been in the Clio Championship for a long while, um, they are the people who use the tyre management correctly. And you know the young drivers who are coming through are really au fait with the way the Michelin tyres or a full slick tyre works on the Clios. Some of those people will get into trouble through the season. Um, you'll find some of those might halfway through the season instead of using two fresh tyres or two new tyres out of the allocation for the Friday official test days, they have to forego that and run the other tyres because they've actually used too many at the start of the season. We get four new tyres, slick tyres, that we can use each weekend, but we've got actually eight into our race allocations, however, as well as our four, four brand new's. We have four tyres that we've previously raced on. It's just absolutely great to be back out in the car, really, and uh, we're P2 when we've come in, less than a tenth of the quickest man out there, but uh, I think some of the others have been popping new tyres on already, and we're out in our old tyres, so we're all happy with that. And I'll do my absolute best to try not to show any pressure, but it is there behind the scenes. And, I know I'm very much one of, one of the more relaxed drivers in the paddock and uh, you know, I'm quite happy to talk to anybody right up to the moment I, I get in the car and go out there and uh, even when it goes wrong I try never to, uh, to throw my toys out of the pram and uh, just try and keep a level head and still keep a smile on my face. Um, you know, at the end of the day I am super happy just to be here so uh, you know, I, I just make sure that I keep reminding myself of that all the time. You know, we've done probably no more than 10 laps in that session and we're, we're back in the groove, so it takes sort of five to feel your way around and the next five then you're just really fine-tuning the last little bits and uh, I feel we've done everything we need to do in that one, so very happy with that. I competed in my first ever go-kart race the day after I turned 10 years old. So uh, that was sort of the start of it, all cadet karting for a little while, raced against some of the, uh, the big names in racing, Jensen Button, um, Daniel Weldon, uh, Anthony Davidson. I raced karts for five years, then uh, did uh, a single race in a Formula Vauxhall Junior the, the day after I turned 16, which made me the youngest driver in the country at the time. Mum and Dad and, uh, and my brother, bless him, have put a lot into, uh, into my racing and, uh, and also my uncle as well, who was the person that helped me to start off in the car racing in the four Fiestas in 99 and out in America as well and then uh, managed to get by with sponsorship here and, here and there since then. So uh, it's hard to say where the talents really come from because there is no history in that respect. <laughs> that want to win all the time and I've always been competitive, you know, I've got... got as growing up I've got friends that you know take the mick out of me all the time because you know whatever we do I'm competitive with it. whether it's you know playing cards to uh, you know go for a cycle ride to uh, you know to absolutely anything that you can have a little competition in I love to have and even if you can't try and make it into some sort of competition so 
I think because I've started racing at the age of 10 years old, it's just it's always been in me. Thank you. you get so many drivers come to you with no sense of realism. They are next world champion and they have to step back from that just a fraction often to realise their true potential. With all drivers, you have to get inside their head. It's a big, big thing. I have to fully understand what they're saying to me. So it's not just a question of it does this and that, it's how that works. And then I've got to translate it into a change on the car that will help the driver achieve. And that's, you know, I think primary objective. You've got to have family support as well. I mean, not only the money side of it, but everything else as well. So he gets lots of support, you know, even, well, even now, though he's with the team. We still, here at every race meeting, wouldn't miss a meeting. I used to get extremely nervous and could hardly stand on my own two legs, but I have learned over th these years now that, uh, you know, it, what is going to happen is going to happen, and I get more nervous for him to do well more than anything else, because I know he's quite safe in the cars. There's not very many really bad injuries, so it's good.